cameras have got loads of buttons and knobs, haven't they? Pretty much like a car. I mean, just look at this lot in here. How could I possibly hope to turn left, use the indicators, wash the windscreen or anything else if I didn't know what these knobs and buttons did? Now don't go into panic mode with this. There are some things on your camera you do need to know about in order to control it. But you don't have to know every last thing, particularly not in the menus, which seem to stretch off into forever. I most certainly don't. So, the first thing I want to talk to you about is the command dial. So cameras, <clears throat> and all the knobs and their buttons. The command dial, I'm going to put that one back in there for a minute. <clears throat> it sits on the top of the camera. I'm using Lorna's little D70 here to demonstrate what, the, what we have and where it is. When you're using the icon of a green camera with auto written over the top, you're telling your DSLR camera that you've spent all this money on. You can change the lenses and it's so versatile. You're telling it to behave like a compact camera. It's doing everything for you. You're just not going to get the best out of it by doing that. Step on one further. You've got these silver highlight ones. The first one on there is P for program. Program mode is giving you a little bit of control back. It's going to set the exposure for you. It's going to choose the shutter aperture combination to get the correct exposure, but it's going to give you control of the white balance and the ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of the chip. It's how much light is needed to affect and create an image. White balance is the color. You know, it's kind of like yellow in the living room when the flash doesn't go off or on a cloudy, dull day, things look a bit awful, so you kind of warm them up with a bit of gold. That's what white balance is. Go to the S, shutter priority, or on some cameras, time value. What you're doing here is telling the camera which shutter speed you want to use. You're saying this is the most important thing in the world. Go and find me an aperture that will work with that shutter speed to give me the correct exposure. Why would you want to do that? Occasionally, a fast shutter speed is great for freezing motion or a slow one for blurring it. The next one on the dial is A, aperture priority. That's also called AV on some Canons and other makes, but it's the same thing. When you're in aperture priority, you're telling the camera that the aperture is the most important thing and you want the camera to go off and find you a shutter speed to work with it. And you still have control of the ISO and the white balance. You may want to use your aperture, and I use it a lot, because you can do lots of creative things with apertures, but I'm not going there right this minute. That's something for a bit later on. All you need to know is you're setting the aperture and the camera's finding the shutter speed to work with it. M, fully manual. Now you are choosing both shutter speed and aperture and white balance and ISO. Why would you want to do that all yourself if the camera will do it for you? Well, there are times when the camera can get confused and you may need to step in and take complete control of it. Working with full manual as well is imperative if you're using flash in a studio or even more complex things with a synchronised flash on the top of the camera. But you can't run before you can walk. I strongly recommend have a fiddle about with aperture and shutter priority before you start getting into full manual mode. While you're doing it in shutter and aperture, you can always have a look and see what settings the shutter speed and aperture combinations that the camera is setting. They're on the top here on this little LCD. There are also, alongside the silver highlight ones, one or two other pre-programmed modes which you could use. We've got lady in a hat. That's for photographing women with big hats. I'm lying, it's not. Actually, it's for portraits. It's a head and shoulders. It will choose a shutter aperture combination, which is best for portraits. Usually a wide aperture because it gives you a fuzzier background. There's a picture of some mountains and that will give you the aperture shutter combination, which is best for landscapes. Usually in landscape, you don't want a fuzzy background. You want it sharp all the way through and it will choose an aperture which will give you more sharpness. Picture of a flower, close-up mode, macro. This is for when you want to get really, really close to something, caterpillars eating your cabbage, all that kind of stuff. Now, the same thing, it's just going to set shutter and aperture combinations to, to, to do that the best it can. Man running, that's sport mode. Things that are moving quickly. It'll choose faster shutter speeds to try and freeze the action. Picture of the moon, that's a night mode. Cameras can often brighten up the night and the, what you're doing by choosing that mode is telling it this is night time, I actually want the shot to be a little bit darker. Backlit mode, it's a picture with a metal man with a light behind. 
The reason you might use that is it'll choose a shutter aperture combination to compensate for all the light that's coming from behind. Now, why would I not use those, those settings and, and do some of this myself? It's because the camera can get so easily confused. You're not gonna get professional level photographs if you continuously rely on these automated modes. There's one or two other buttons here like access to the menus and playing your pictures. But that's your command doll and that's where most of it happens.